And it's my understanding that a Rotary, the past Rotary president, can go anywhere he would like to go in the world. It's his decision. And he chose us. Now, the question would sort of arise, why? <laughs> well, Stella gave me her theory on it. <laughs> and that was that after a, a few years of uh, sort of incompetent male leadership, he's come to thank her <laughs> for straightening things out. <laughs> Now, I see Louisa and, and uh, uh, Wendy nodding their heads said, finally, he has said something what we can agree with. <laughs> but whatever the reason, we're very thankful that you're here. And as can be expected from any Rotary International President, he has a very um, extensive, impressive, professional, and Rotary bio. And I'm not going to get into that today. You can read it in the, uh, in the pamphlet. You can go online and see what his bio is. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories of my experiences from, when, from the, my time that I spent with him as district governor. Any of you that have been to San Diego and been through that training know what an intense week it is, filled with wonderful speakers, great educational breakout sessions. But the, district, but the incoming president has about two hours that week to inspire and enthuse the 500 and some odd district governors that are about to come on in July 1st. And I remember the first time that then President-elect Braun spoke to us. And he talked about his youth and being a member of the Key Club, which as I understand it is a something like uh, Interact, but only the Kiwanis, and how much he enjoyed it. And when it became time for him that he wanted to join a service club in his life, why didn't he become a Kiwana? Well, the reason is very simple and a lesson to us all. Somebody invited him to a Rotary meeting and asked if he would like to join. And, that, and from there, he became president of RI. Um, during that week, oh, one other thing I should say that hasn't been mentioned here this morning, his wife is a Rotarian too. Not the same club, I understand. <laughs> during that week, the incoming president unveils his theme. And you can see from the signs that are around how important that theme is because that's what district governors use to sort of guide their year. And that incoming president has about, when he starts out introducing his theme, in the very first few minutes is critical. Because if he doesn't grasp us, he loses us. And I heard uh, uh, somebody say this morning, I guess it's Stella, about the five things that Mike McGovern said. Well, I can remember seeing President-elect Burton on the podium looking down at us and it appeared he was looking each one of us directly in the eye. And here's the first thing he said, and I think it bears repeating. Why are you here today? Why did you join Rotary? The reasons are probably as numerous as the number of Rotarians in the room, but hopefully at some point you came to get involved, to make a difference. And in Rotary is just about everything else in life, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. If you only put in a token effort, you won't achieve very much or get much satisfaction of what, out of what you do achieve. But when you make the decision to truly engage Rotary, to accept Rotary service and Rotary values into every day of your life, that is when you will see the incredible impact that you can have. That is when you'll find the inspiration, the excitement, and the power to truly change lives, and no one's life will be changed more than your own. With those words, he had us in the palm of his hands. From there, he went on to motivate and inspire us to go out in the Rotary world to engage Rotary and change lives. To the man I was proud to call my president, I ask you to stand and welcome him and give him a great 7820 welcome to our podium.
Thank you very much. Please sit down. I've been trying to decide whether I should get that cane. <laughs> but I know we're ahead of time. And I've been told in the past to take as much time as I need. <laughs> so I feel right at home, and I will absolutely do so. <laughs> it is ab absolutely wonderful to be with you today. <laughs> you know, I'm so delighted that uh, President Gary is somewhere in the world. <laughs> but not here. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Uh, he has an, a very aggressive calendar, <clears throat> probably more aggressive than he should have booked, but you know, I, I tried to warn him about pacing yourself, and it was like <laughs> So uh, you can only help someone if they want to be helped, but you know, uh, we're delighted that Gary and Corinna asked us to come here. Actually, as, uh, as Greg mentioned, uh, one of the things, it's become a tradition, I think, in, at Rotary International, at least so far, and I'm hoping that um, President-elect Robbie continues it, is that we've all extended to the past presidents, who we think have paid a pretty good price to be called a past president, uh, the opportunity to tell the president where they would like to be sent as president's representative, and many of them, some of them older Past presidents no longer choose to represent the president. And I'm getting closer to that date. <laughs> but uh, so, why, you know, we are, were able to get the list. And I told the past governors last night that uh, we remembered finally being here in this hotel in 2007 at Monty Ordnard's Institute. And as you know, Monty ended up being, Monty and Liz ended up being our aides. And uh, we were so impressed with, with them. And, uh, they became such dear friends that um, we had such a wonderful experience here. We wanted to come back. Uh, we love the spirit of Canada itself, but we really love the spirit of the folks in this district. And uh, so we looked to see who the governor was, and we remembered Stella and Paul, and we'd met them a couple of times and thought it would really be a lot of fun to go someplace. Uh, we, you know, uh, we could have picked anywhere in the world. Uh, we thought about Australia, but we had just been there with our convention, et cetera. Looking at other international destinations, we looked at Texas. <laughs> but, but we decided that we would really rather come to Halifax. And so when I um, sent my request to President Gary, he honored it. And, um, you know, I know that he would really like to be here. I think Gary, Gary, it's actually done something that I chose not to do. He has actually been to several district conferences and represented himself. And out of respect for all of my governors last year, I chose not to do that. <laughs> for the simple reason that why did I select you and not you? I didn't have to explain that. So if you see Gary and you find out he went somewhere else, ask him why he didn't come here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Don't do that. See, because if he had come here, I wouldn't be here, and that wouldn't be fun. But uh, it's always fun to come to a district conference. Our conference was last weekend, and I had promised uh, our governor that I would be there, and I, we were there for the entire conference, the first conference in our district we'd been to in some three years. And I know this conference was actually scheduled for last weekend, so when I initially looked at the list, you weren't on there, because I blocked out that weekend. So I'm glad Stella was, had the foresight to change it. She knew I was coming, not really, but uh, I've, I've told her, you know, I hope on Sunday afternoon when all this is over you feel as exuberant about the fact that I came as you seem to be now that I'm here. <laughs> but you know, you never know, the verdict's always out. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know where Jim went. Oh, there he is. Well. <laughs> She blocks you out pretty well, you know that? <laughs> You're easy to miss when she's sitting there. Uh, you know, he could have been a governor in our year, Greg. He caught the theme. It was all about the fact that, you know, you, if you don't engage Rotary, you can't change lives. 
And it's a real selfish act, as you pointed out. The life you're going to change the most is your own. There's nothing you can do about it. You're the beneficiary of your good works. And I always tell people, and this is kind of kidding Gary, Sally, you can't light up Rotary unless you engage Rotary. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> and what I've seen here already is a lot of lighting up Rotary. So you have, this year, gotten the Rotarians to continue to engage Rotary. And that's a real plus. You know, I'm so pleased to see that you've got your club's thinking about Rotary Club Central. I'm a big fan of Rotary Club Central. As a matter of fact, I am so disappointed with my own district. I have said to my incoming governor, Jetta and I will give a Paul Harris Fellow to any club in our district that you certify as having met the requirements for Rotary Club Central. Now that's a sad comment, isn't it? Did I have to prime the pump that way? But I think it's critically important. Yes, it's got some great information for the organization in general to try to quantify what it is as Rotary International that we do around the world every year. But I think back to 1983, 84, when I was the president of my Rotary Club, I would love for someone to have given me a sheet of paper that told me something about that club. Some of the critical components of the goals that had been set, whether they had been achieved, why they had not been achieved, what we're going to do about it next year, all of those sorts of things. And I'm a big believer in Rotary Showcase. Last week at our district conference, to sit in that plenary hall and hear all of the things that are going on in our district. I had to be reminded because I hadn't been there in three years. I haven't been on club visits since 1987. But to hear what all was going on in southwestern Oklahoma made me feel good. Now, the problem is I had to go to a district conference to find out. Because, you know, one of the things that we do as poorly as anyone is tell our story. We don't tell our story locally. And I would say to you, if you still have a hometown newspaper, and while I'm into all this new gadgetry, I still like to have a piece of newspaper in my hand. I'm an old-fashioned guy. If you've got a newspaper in your community and the people, your editor, are not in Rotary, you need to get them in Rotary. You need to be telling the story because where are your members going to come from? They're not going to come from Norman, Oklahoma and come up here every week to attend your meetings. They're going to come from your community. And all of your Rotarians in your clubs need to know what your club does. And the folks in your community need to know what your club does. You know, I was so excited when I was president about Rotary Club Central. I was sitting in the president's office one day, and there was a group coming from Norman of about, oh, 25 or so Rotarians. They wanted to come up and see world headquarters and see the office and see the boardroom and, and the whole bit. And we were delighted to host them. So before they came, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to get on Rotary Club Central and just see what they put in this year. So I, I you know, I, I logged in. And I thought, well, you know, I think I'll put some goals in because they didn't, hadn't done a very good job. And the message came back to me, you are not authorized. <laughs> now, isn't that a kicker? I couldn't even get into my own club. You know, it, did, it didn't recognize me, but I didn't have the authority. Obviously, I wasn't president of the club or any of those other officers. But, you know, if you haven't really gotten into that, please, please consider that because it's a great tool to make your club even stronger. You know, one of the things that uh, has been going on for several years now, about uh, <clears throat> no, four or five years ago, the board took uh, $3 million from the reserve fund and dedicated it to membership development, which sounds like a really great idea. The problem with that is there was no plan on how we deal with that. 
So starting work, when I came on board as the president nominee, Kalyan Banerjee was the president and Sakuji Tanaka was the president-elect. And so we had started working the year before in Ray's year on regional membership plans. So we all got together and decided we really needed to push this. We needed to get the identification of folks in the areas, in the zones, to come up with a plan for an intelligent way to spend that $3 million. If we're going to spend your money, and it is your money, then we need to be able to stand on the stage and tell you what we got for that money. And we're starting to finally see some results. We do have in place now the regional membership plans. Uh, when we first started, we had like six plans in the United States, which doesn't make any sense. So I called in all of the US directors. This included you guys as well, North America, and the Canadians bit, the whole bit. And I got the, I got the director. I got the director-elect, and I got the director nominee. And we had them come to Evanston, and we pulled them together and said, you know, before you leave here, you're going to come to consensus on one plan for North America. Because the problems that you guys have are the problems that we have. And one of the greatest areas in the world where Rotary is not growing is North America. So we've got work to do. You know, for the first time in many years, when we left office on June 30, there was a positive increase in members last year of some 8,000. You know, 8,000 is not a big number. I wanted more. I would have taken one. <laughs> I didn't tell anyone that. As I speak right now, we're about 40,000 ahead of where we were at the beginning of the year. I don't know how that will hold. We were, way, we were about 28,000 ahead this time last year. But by the time you get down to the end of the year, some people have found the exit door, and they just kind of walk through. I think we'll be positive again. I think with the development of and implementation of these regional membership plans, I think we've started to turn the corner. It's not going to be a quick fix. And I don't want to stand here and tell you, you know, for three million bucks we got 8,000 8, members. The $3 million was the seed money to get it all started for a long-term, a long-term program. When President Gary came on board, we brought him into the process to get buy-in. Just what you're doing in this district with your governors, it's continuity. Let's don't reinvent the wheel. Let's don't change tires every time we get a new person. Let's develop something that's good and keep it going. When President-elect Ravi came in, we brought him in as well. And I got Gary and Ravi to agree with me on who would chair the membership effort for three years. And it, initially, there was not consensus on who that should be. So we had a few little personal meetings with each one. And we got them all to agree. And I wrote a letter to this person. And it had three signature places on it. One for me, one for Gary, and one for Ravi. And I took the letter to each one, and I'd already signed it. And I said, you need to sign this. We're we going to ask this person to do this, give them the responsibility for three years. We're going to agree on this because we've got to get this moving. Our, to our, real, our survival depends on this. And we all agreed. I think we're seeing some results as a, as a result of that, you know, some positive results. But you know what we need? How many people can tell me how many members 
Rotary International has brought into the organization? Can anyone tell me? Zero. Have you met, ever met a member that was brought into Rotary by Rotary International? I haven't. It's real simple. The members of Rotary International are Rotary clubs, not Rotarians. Rotarians are members of Rotary clubs who can extend an invitation to join your Rotary club. Has to be one of your members. Has to be you. Right? So, whether we succeed or not depends on who? You. Now I'm going to embarrass some people in this room. I want everybody to look around when I ask you this. <clears throat> Would everyone who has brought in a member this year please raise your hand? Look around, look around. See the ones who don't have their hand up? <laughs> now my question, see you can put your hands down. My question to you is why? Why haven't you brought someone in? Why are you so selfish? Why? We have a great theme next year. Be a gift to Rotary. Have you ever received a greater gift than being asked to join a Rotary club? In, in, in retrospect, looking back on your experience, and I have to believe you're pretty committed because you're here this weekend. Have you ever received a greater gift? Why don't you share it? Why are you being so selfish. Because you know what's going to happen when you share that gift? It's only going to grow for you. It's only going to be a greater experience for you. It's much, it's, it's much more important to give a gift, as we all know, than it is to receive a gift. But you've already gotten your gift. I would bet you that if I ask everyone in this room who sponsored you into your Rotary Club, you could tell me. I bet you if I ask you who the president of Rotary International was that year, you couldn't tell me. Or who the governor was. 40 years ago. <laughs> Paul Harris, yeah. <clears throat> Did you know Paul well? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> but see, that's how important it is to us. And Greg mentioned the fact that uh, I was very active in, in Key Club in high school, and I really did think I would be someday a Kiwanian, but they never invited me. You know, as a matter of fact, I have never been invited to speak to a Kiwanis Club as I stand here in front of you today. I have, I have spoken to the president of Kiwanis International. Every year at the Rose Bowl, we're always invited out to be a participant to, uh, at the Rose Bowl, and, and et cetera. And, and the, they host a, a brunch, which has the president of Kiwanis, Lions, Optimist, and Rotary. And we all get together and exchange ideas and whatnot. And I did share my story with the president of Kiwanis. But I have been invited to two Lions clubs. Uh, the first was in Oklahoma City when I was the sitting governor for Rotary. And uh, I said to them, you know, this is probably what really killed me the way I said it. <laughs> you people. Now, this was in 1987. I don't use that anymore. I said, you know, you people are as bad at membership development as, as we are in Rotary. Um, because I could just as easily today be your district governor instead of Rotary's. But you didn't ask. This is the first Lions Club I've ever spoken to. Of course, that, that Lions Club has never invited me back. <laughs> but I did get invited to the Lions Club in Norman this year. Um, they wanted me to talk about my experiences as president of Rotary International. It's a, it's a nice, small little club of about 35 members. The interesting thing about 
the Lions Club in Norman and the Kiwanis Club in Norman is the fact that they were both started by the Norman Rotary Club. Because in those days, our, my club was chartered in 1919. I've noticed that the Halifax Club was 1913. You, we had the classification system, which I think is absolutely wonderful, but they had a doctor in Rotary, and they had a banker in Rotary, and they had a lawyer in Rotary, and I'm here to tell you that no Rotary Club can have too many lawyers. <laughs> so what we ended up doing, because we wanted to get more involvement in the community, I wasn't there then, we started the Kalines Club and the Kiwanis Club. We were our own worst enemy. I, I said the, the Lions Club has about 35 members. My Rotary Club has 150. Um, the Breakfast Club that I started when I was governor has about 92, 95, somewhere in that range. Jetta's Club is an evening club, has about 28, 27, somewhere in there. And then we have a new club called Legacy, which is one of these free spirit clubs, which I'm all for. <laughs> I mean, honest to God, they decide sometime during the week where they're going to meet or if they're going to meet. I don't know how you do a makeup there, and that's okay. I'm off. I signed their charter as president of Rotary International. You know, uh, they've never invited me to come yet. They may turn into a Lions Club. Who knows? I mean, you know, that's possible. But uh, I'm all, I'm all for that. But you know. Rotary's doing well in our community, but just think about how much better we could be if every member brought in just one member. That's all I asked my governors to do last year, and all I asked Rotarians to do. Well, I had a governor down in, um, in New York, or, or, or Massachusetts, I can't remember, I think it may have been Massachusetts, who brought in 95 members last year. Now, if I had asked each one of you to bring in 95 members, there was this, I'd be speaking to an empty room. But no, just one? Everybody in this room knows somebody that would make a great Rotarian. And why you're not asking, I don't know. So, you still have time this year. You have two months left to raise the bar and put the real burden on Jim for next year. <laughs> and you need to do that. You need to do that. Because, you know, it's, to me it's not about the dues and all that kind of stuff. That's totally irrelevant. What it's about is the differences we can make in our communities. And I know that in every community that's represented here, you make a true, true difference. Well, I'm delighted to see and hear about your million dollar dinner, your foundation dinner. We're getting ready to, when we leave here, we're gonna, I think probably because of your challenge, District 7010 is having one Thursday night next week where I'm speaking. So I'm gonna really give it to them <laughs> after having been here. But I, you know, I love your support of the foundation. We have, uh, We've achieved three records last year. I think one of them's gonna be broken, Stella, this year. We, we uh, right now, the, the uh, first class, that's what we called ourselves because we were the first ones to do it, and challenged the best, uh, the best class and world class to raise money for the annual programs fund right now we have the record of the most annual funds ever contributed in a year to the Rotary Foundation. That's a fact. But as Mike and I heard at the trustees meeting a couple of weeks ago, we're about 8% ahead this year on annual fund giving. And we hope you just knock out the thing out of the park. We hope, this is what we want every record, we want it to be broken every year. So we're wishing and pulling for you. So you guys, think about the annual programs fund and write those checks and get them in. The second thing we did, we had more endowment gifts 
dollar-wise than any class in history. And right now you're behind on that one. So you need to think about that as well. And the third thing is we had more arch clump society inductions than ever in the history of the organization. We had about 84 or 85. Now, that's 84 or 85 times a minimum of a quarter of a million dollars, which isn't too shabby. But our hope is when we challenged the best class was that you break those records. You know what it's about? It's about awareness. It's raising the bar, making sure every Rotarian understands what it is our Rotary Foundation does. And not only every Rotarian, but everyone in your community. Because they too can participate in these projects. I think you say projects, don't you? Well, I, I don't say that, so I'm sorry. But, it, but anyway, you know, it's, it's just incredible what can happen. You know, when I was uh, finishing my term as district governor in 1988, I made the mistake. I do that a lot. Maybe we've got a lot in common here, Greg. And I didn't apologize to anybody for it either, come to think of it. But I made the mistake of asking the Rotary Foundation how much money was in the endowment fund for Rotary, which I thought was a fair question being in the business I was in. At the University of Oklahoma back in those days, we were well over, we were probably somewhere between 100 and 150 million, which was a lot of money in those days, especially for a small school in a poor state. You know what the answer was on the Rotary Foundation? They had actually started the Rotary Foundation, as you know, in 1917. The University of Oklahoma Foundation was started in 1944. Rotary had a million members, roughly a million members in 1989. Many more than we had graduates over all the years, as you might imagine. The endowment for the Rotary Foundation, I was told at that time, was $2 million. Of course, my first question was, how could that be? Because I know we, you know, I hadn't hadn't pulled all this together just yet. Paul Harris fell us a thousand bucks a pop, but you know we spend that money three years later. And I'm all for that. That works beautifully because that's how we do all the wonderful things around the world that we do. That's how we change all the lives that we change. But I said to the staff and to a couple of uh, real high up people like past presidents that I knew a little bit, that we need to have more money than that. We need to have a program where somebody can be a Rotarian forever. So they can continue to give money to the foundation in the annual programs fund, but you know, they might like to set up an endowment so that in perpetuity, they continue to support the foundation. Well, because of that smart alecky remark, I was invited to be a consultant to the development committee of the trustees. And we put the permanent fund initiative together and we couldn't call it the endowment fund because of translation issues. That has since come back around and we're calling it the endowment fund again. But you know, we've made a lot of progress. When you count expectancies, we're about $990 million. Isn't that amazing? And, and we've done that in spite of ourselves, in spite of trying to keep this a secret. I mean, we, we're members of Rotary. We've got the greatest gift that's ever been given, been given to anyone. We have the greatest foundation in the world, and we don't tell anybody. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? We need to go out and tell our story. I have yet to meet a Rotarian who wasn't invited by another Rotarian to join a club. Although I've asked that question and I've had people raise their hand. <clears throat> I don't believe them. I have yet to receive a contribution to the Rotary Foundation that someone didn't ask for. You know, People have to be asked. 
We were in Bogota, Colombia at his own institute a couple of years ago. And I told the audience, you need to get your ask in gear. No matter how you look at it. That's, that's right. My translator <laughs> <clears throat> didn't hear the K. <laughs> and he looked at me. He's standing down here. And I looked at him. And it's a, it's a great Rotarian from Panama named Alan Sellers. Some of you know Alan. And I said, Alan, I said, ask, A-S-K. And the look, the blank look on his face would astound you. And we keep doing this for a few minutes, and then he gives up and turns around and says it again. Well, the audience cracks up. There's another Rotarian who was also helping me with the translations. He came to the podium and said, let me tell them what you said. So I stepped aside and he told them. But we do have to get our ask in gear. Nothing is going to happen. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. We're going to sit here and enjoy each other's company and continue to age. And then we're going to die off and Rotary's going to die. And I, for one, don't want that. I'm very happy to tell you in my Rotary Club of 150 members, I am the 15th oldest in terms of membership time in my Rotary Club. I like that. I wish I was number one. I'm still not going to quit. I'm going to keep the age pretty high. I'm not going to quit, but I'm delighted that we're bringing in younger members. Our district, our uh, director from our area is Greg Pod. Some of you may know Greg. Greg had a membership summit in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And by the way, if you get a chance to go on that exchange to New Mexico, you should go. We love New Mexico. It's just absolutely wonderful. And I may see you there because we like to go out there and just, let, you know, kick back. But last summer, Rotary International had 100 young Rotarians come to World Headquarters to try to find out why they were in Rotary and what their expectations were. We had five of those folks come to Albuquerque. And it was the most enlightening program I have seen on membership anywhere. And the thing that made me feel so good about it is I've been saying this for many, many years now. The thing I get really sick and tired of is some old Rotarian like me standing in front of you telling you what the new generation wants. Because what happens is we have a tendency to stereotype groups. The baby boomers want this. The, the Gen X wants this. Gen Y wants that. And, and so on and so forth. I don't know how many baby boomers there are in the room. I'm in that group. And I would bet you, if you lined us up and asked us all what Rotary is, it would be something different to each one of us. And I bet we all don't. See, I can't stand butter. I don't eat butter. I assume that all baby boomers don't eat butter. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where I don't like croissants. I guess I've had too many. I don't even like strawberries anymore. <laughs> Why? I guess I'm, I'm changing. You know, I don't know. But my point is, all of these generations are just like all of us. We have different wants and needs. And that's what this group told us. They liked being in Rotary because of what it is and what it does. And the fact that they get to sit next to somebody who's had this experience before, and in many cases, a pretty high-powered person, and pick their brain and become friends with them. Our district governor last week had three of those five come to the district conference, and I can assure you they were the hit of the conference. There's a hundred of those young people just south of you, and sometime you might get that list and see who's close because they will, there will be some that will be really close to you, and you might have them come and give you a program. Uh, I talked to my club president who was at the conference last week who's from our hometown. And, uh, and I said, uh, you know, we need to have, there's one from the Hutchinson, Kansas. She's 32 years old. And she's the mayor of Hutchinson, Kansas. The other one that was from Colleen, Texas, and she's, what, 31 or something like that. 
And I said, you know, you ought to have these two young ladies come to our club and be a program sometime, and we'll invite all the clubs in the area. So, that, because most of us sit there and think, well, you know, if, if they're always on their iPad or their iPhone or their Android or whatever, and they're on those things a lot, just like many of us are. But you know what they want? They want a chance to do something. They want a chance to get engaged. They want a chance to light up Rotary. And who's going to give them that chance? It's up to us. We have to do that. It's up to us. If this organization is going to survive, it's only going to survive if we light up Rotary and we pass that torch to someone else and the next thing you know, the room is full of lights. What was it Gary said that Confucius said? It's better to light one candle than to sit in darkness and curse the world. You know what? I think we're sitting in darkness cursing the world now. And we need to change that. Nobody's going to change it for us. I hate to think that I ended up being the 103rd president of Rotary International and it died. Isn't that a sad thought? Can you imagine? Just think about just your own community. What wouldn't be getting done if you didn't have that Rotary Club? Maybe it'd become a Lions Club, a Kiwanis Club, an Optimist Club, but it would probably become a Pessimist Club and nothing would happen. So it's up to us. It's really up to us. Everybody going to Sapalo to get inspired, to light up Rotary? It's going to be a big blowout. I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot of fun. We hope to see you there. Uh, you know, we're just really, really delighted to be with you. We, we do feel that we talk a little funny, and that's okay, <laughs> you know. Oh, you don't talk funny at all. <laughs> you sound like you're from the Maritimes. <laughs> now, <laughs> say again? Prince Edward, <laughs> Prince Edward Island. Is that not in the Maritimes? <laughs> now, you're going to mess me up. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Governor Sella, thank you for having us. Uh, we're really glad that, uh, again, that Gary and Corinna are somewhere else. Uh, and I will tell Gary that what a great time we had here and uh, I, I know that they would really love to be with you and you would be very warm and welcoming to them as you would any president's representative but we feel a great special privilege to be with you and uh, we wish you Godspeed and continue to light up Rotary. Thank you very much.